Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Come Again. I'm your host Shannon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new issue of Ghostbusters 101 number one. So hey guys, welcome to Come Again. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell. Comment below, hit the like button, and maybe even share with your friends. Good job. We have cookies. And milk. Might be semen, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In this, the the original Ghostbusters, Ray, Peter, uh, Egon and Winston team up with the new uh, Answer the Call Ghostbusters. All right, so the story starts off with the guys at Coney Island um, out to capture a ghost um, right there. Yeah, Basically, a guy just uh, passed away, and he spent his whole life wishing for the amusement park at Coney Island to be reopened, all that. So when he died, first thing he did was he recreated the Coney Island uh, theme park. Of course, he did so right above a massive pool of positively charged slime. Like in Ghostbusters 2, only that was negatively charged slime. Uh, they had to positively charge slime so that, to get the uh, Statue of Liberty to move and to defeat Vigo. So this is actually positive charged slime. I'm having nothing but problems with this thing right now. All right, there's, yeah. Uh, so they finally end up uh, managing to capture him. But in the process, they end up having to explode this pool of positively charged slime because in order to neutralize it, they had to fuel it with negative emotion. One of those negative emotions was that Egon peed in the pool of slime. <laughs> and they have, they ended up uh, setting off an ecto grenade inside the pool, causing it to explode, which really, really upset the people of New York. But to top it off, when they first decide to negatively charge the slime to neutralize it. The first thing Egon does is punch Ray right in the nose. <laughs> so Ray's just like, you know, we could have done something better to ch negatively charge the slime. Um, you didn't have to punch me in the nose. And Egon's just like, sorry, it was a, it was a reaction my first reaction to having to negatively charge it so here you can see the pool of slime is exploding from all the fire hydrants and everything and it starts raining slime neutralized slime but this causes the epa to pay a visit to the paranormal contracts oversight commission which is headed by none other than Walter Peck. <laughs> and it, it's really funny because in the first movie, Walter Peck worked for the EPA. And then this guy who's an even bigger douchebag than Walter Peck was. <laughs> uh, he goes to Peck's office and he's like, do you have any idea of the position the EPA must take on this? And Peck's like, are you, you are not seriously asking me that. <laughs> <laughs> and this dude's just Peck knows realizes what kind of a douchebag he was when he first met the Ghostbusters at this point uh, <laughs> the guy from the EPA he says take care of this or I'm going to have you guys deported to Guam and as he's leaving Peck's just like Guam is a United States territory idiot <laughs> so anyway Ray is back at the firehouse and apparently, uh, the issue before, Janine's niece and two of her friends had gotten a hold of a ghost trap and proton pack and decided to take matters into their own hands and resolve the issue themselves. And it led to 
Janine forcing them to be lectured by Ray Stans. And in this series, Haley Griffin from the Extreme Ghostbusters is Ray's assistant. Uh, she started out as shop help at Ray's Occult Books. And then Ray brought her on to the Ghostbusters team. She is part of Ghostbusters International now, which is a whole separate thing. Um, it's jo it's uh, Haley, as, along with two others, plus a veteran Ghostbuster. Uh, they usually go out of country, you know. Uh, there's also another team of Ghostbusters, which is the Chicago branch, which is just two guys. Uh, one is the rookie from the Ghostbusters video game. And the other is a uh, ex-con who um, he tried stealing the Ghostbusters equipment. Haley's like, you know, you guys have had enough of the lecturing. You want to see some cool stuff. They all raise their hands. They're bored out of their minds. She takes them down to the basement where the Ecto Containment Unit is and shows them none other than the dimensional gateway that Ray built alongside Donatello from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the third crossover the uh, Ghostbusters have had so far. Uh, the first time was with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, IDW's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Second time was with the real Ghostbusters from the animated series from the 90s, 80s and 90s. And this time it's with the new Ghostbusters. Peck pays a, pays a visit to the Ghostbusters and uh, he, he's, he's kind of becoming less of a douchebag. He's forced to have to lecture the Ghostbusters on, you know, you got to be more careful with this stuff because the amount that the EPA is finding, planning to fine you guys, you don't have enough uh, in your budget that you're bringing in to cover this. You're gonna, your doors are going to be closed down. Peter's just like... Uh, He's joking and all this and saying, whoop do you do you know, and Peck, he just says, this isn't the time for jokes, Mr. Venkman. This idiotic representative from the EPA has a very real way to finally bring down your firm, and more importantly, my reputation. And of course, <laughs> Winston and Ray, um, <laughs> Winston says, you're griping about a jerk from the EPA, <laughs> and Ray why, it's practically Christmas. <laughs> and Peter just says, Ray's right, this is a dream come true. Hang on, I have a tape recorder in here somewhere. I'll just, I'll just need you to say all that again. <laughs> While Peck is worried about the Ghostbusters closing down as well as his professional reputation, Peter comes up with the great idea of, hey, why don't we charge people to teach them how to be Ghostbusters. Basically like um, a day camp for adults. And then when they'll keep their eye out for anyone who's anyone who shows, shows promise as a Ghostbuster. And then they'll charge them to train them how to be professional Ghostbusters. And then eventually uh, recruit them as a Ghostbuster as well. And Peck, he's just astonished. Like, hey, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> so anyway... While Haley and the three, Janine's niece and her friends are downstairs, Haley opens a gateway to another dimension. This dimension, we find out, is the Answer the Call Ghostbusters universe. Um, it's also revealed that if the gateway is stays open for too long, it attracts ghosts because the gateway, the thing in between dimensions, is made out of the same stuff that ghosts are made out of. If it stays open too long, it can seriously uh, attract several ghosts. And they're just, you know, something goes wrong and after they leave and, you know, the gateway starts to sizzle. All right. See, here's a ghost coming in. Haley has to hurry up and shut it off. And then it starts to sizzle once they leave. That's when the answer of the call Ghostbusters come in. And they really portray them very well. Uh, you got Holtzman and Patty who end up uh, busting this ghost. And it ends up flying in at Holtzman. <laughs> and Holtzman's like, okay, I've had enough of this. You know, time to uh, 
Time to get serious, and she pulls out her little toy and just destroys the ghost. And, of course, Abby wants them to bring back a ghost so that she can study it. And so, Patty's trying to... They're covered in slime there. Patty's just like, okay, they want us to bring one in, uh, so no more disintegration. Basically like Darth Vader to Boba Fett. <laughs> Um, and of course, Kevin's in the background wearing a broccoli costume, uh, doing some Tai Chi or something. I don't know. I, I couldn't really stand the Kevin character in the movie. Abby starts to realize that something strange is, well, something strange is going on. Something's wrong. She says, uh, anyway, something's not right. What if the dimensional dam is about to burst? What if we have to save the world again? We need to be prepared. Abby, the end of the world doesn't really happen every week. So there's a lot of foreshadowing in this issue. It is just the first issue. And of course, it is backed up with a Ghostbusters International story. Uh, it's just a partial story. First couple pages where Ray's getting his t uh, tarot read or whatever. But anyway, usually um, Ghostbuster team-ups are about four issues long. Uh, however, I think this one's going to end up being six. I could be wrong. In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters is four issues. Ghostbusters Get Real was four issues. So this is going to be a little bit longer, I think. I think it needs to be because they're talking about both universes actually merging together. And I think this is actually going to be the answer the call Ghostbusters introduction into the comics um, if it's well received like I'm hoping uh, they're probably going to continue their story in comic book form like they did with the Ghostbusters or with the original Ghostbusters I really really enjoy what IDW is doing with Ghostbusters I enjoy what they've done with Ghostbusters in the past I've got the volume one omnibus right here uh, I really enjoy it. Um, I've got the Ghostbusters Get Real and Ghostbusters Ninja Turtles crossovers uh, on digital download. I've even got a few issues of uh, Ghostbusters International and a few others. Uh, so yeah, I'm really enjoying what IDW is doing. I hope they continue. It, it's pretty seamless as to you could go straight from watching the movies to reading these comics it's set in the same universe they have the characters down pat they really they really did their homework on the original ghostbusters on the answer the call ghostbusters uh, they're they're doing a great job i really enjoy it can't say enough about it uh, like i said the first issue of ghostbusters 101 was a little dull um However, it's setting things up uh, for things to come. Uh, so the first issue of a miniseries, it will be a little dull. But there's a lot of humor in it. A lot of fun references to the movies. I think you guys will really like it. If you liked the movies, um, the original movies, and or the 2016 movie, pick up IDW Ghostbusters. Great comics. You'll, you'll get a kick out of them. Um, they're, they're like little mini movies. I really like, I was, I wasn't too into it at first, but I really like the direction the art, uh, has gone with in these. Um, there's a good one. It really captures the Ghostbusters. Um, it's not an exact, uh, reference to their character or their, um, uh, features. Uh, their likeness, but it's close enough. You know who's who, and it, it it just really sets them apart from anything else that's ever been created on uh, in Ghostbuster comics. Um, in the real Ghostbusters, like I said before, uh, Ghostbusters get real. That was a great storyline. I'm hoping Ghostbusters 101 is a good storyline. Uh, eventually I will be doing a review on Ghostbusters and Ninja Turtles. I haven't got to it yet. I've got to reread it. Uh, it's been a while since I've read it. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Uh, 
Ghostbusters 101. It just hit stands today. Um, luckily, mine, I got mine at 11 o'clock last night. I pre-ordered it off Amazon and Comixology. As Amazon took out of my bank account at exactly 11 o'clock. And at 11.02, Ghostbusters 101 issue number one was on my Kindle ready to go. Check it out, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys like this review. And I'll be back again with a review of issue number two. Hopefully, I'm going to try and get each issue of the series as it comes out so that I can come on here and review it for you guys the day it's released. Take care, guys. of course if you like this video make sure to hit that subscribe button make sure you hit the like comment below and share with your friends <laughs> i hate you